Welcome to Crypto Bytes, the podcast where we take today's news and information in the crypto space and break it down into bite-sized chunks. I'm your host, Rick. And this is Rob. Remember to smash that like button, hit that subscribe, and comment below. You know, it is 2021, so check out our socials at Our Heroes Crypto, at Crypto Bytes Pod. And remember to check out all things NFTs with your boy Keys at NFTs with Keys. And we are a Cardano stake poll operator. Check us out, ticker AGC. Check us out in the comments below. Hey! Remember, this is not financial. You know what? Actually, this is financial advice for the upcoming Bitcoin bull run. The value of an investment in Bitcoin could decline significantly and without warning, including to zero. You should be prepared to lose your entire investment. Or be prepared to be billionaires. That's... Bitcoin is going to be worth more in the future than it is now. You know what? You're probably you're probably absolutely right. I mean, we're in that Bitcoin coming of age story now. I say coming of age story, but I think we all know Bitcoin at its all time high was at sixty four thousand eight hundred and sixty three dollars, which on the surface is pretty astronomical. But if we're looking at the market today, we're inching closer and closer to that all time high. Uh, you know, we say Bitcoin coming of age story here. These numbers are huge, but now we're seeing the SEC actually approve a Bitcoin ETF. I, I call it, and other people call it the Bitcoin domino theory. This is another domino in, in the line of dominoes that are going to fall. Well, <clears throat> one of the cool things I think about with this ETF coming along is it's going to allow people uh, the ability to invest in the crypto space without having to worry about all the crazy crypto jargon like the wallets or the dApps, uh, the DeFi. It'll yeah. allow them to invest in that, you know, pretty comfortably. I think this is mainly geared towards like the people that would be classified as boomers or these hedge funds that don't want to take direct. They would think of it as a risk of getting Bitcoin directly when they can just trade futures. And these are future contracts, an ETF, right? Mm -hmm. It's just going to be futures. So now... They have the potential to manipulate Bitcoin even more. But again, Bitcoin was built for this. It Bitcoin, by just the economics that we have today, it will be worth more in the future than it is today. Well, I mean, if you, I don't know if you uh, took a look at the, um, at ProShares um, proposal that they put in for their Bitcoin ETF or the verbiage that they put into that uh, and how they state that the ETF that ProShares is going to be providing can and most likely will be not anywhere closely related to the price of Bitcoin because of how volatile of course, Bitcoin truly yeah, is. It's, it's kind of like how the the SLV isn't priced with how the price of silver is. Right? Oh, you know, that makes sense. And like, you know, I really see this as a good opportunity for, uh, I'm going to say a lot of the, the older people to get into the crypto game without really having to worry. And you know what? You probably should because this is going to shoot up. I'm going to go ahead and put a graph on the screen here, but you can see here in 2013 when Bitcoin first went parabolic. And then we can see here in 2017 when it went parabolic again. And now here in 2021, we're inching right close to where we can see the shoot up again. And if we're if the all time high is already at 64K, what's this next moonshot going to look like? 250,000. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, the godfather of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser. I think he's been he's been saying since the beginning of this year, 250,000 or 150,000, somewhere between them. Uh, those two numbers but yeah it, it's it's going up and we see the potential with this bitcoin etf i mean can you imagine someone who goes short on this they're gonna get wrecked you know i was uh i was that michael berry the uh the big short guy i was <laughs> yeah. just reading something about that yesterday about him him saying you know how do i how do i short this market i know there's a lot of money in here and even he's trying to figure this out i think he ate his uh, his crow already oh yeah he's already well he already uh Changed his opinion on Tesla. Mm -hmm. right? He's no longer short on Tesla. It's only a matter of time before he's no longer short on Bitcoin as well. Now you make one movie about the guy and all of a sudden you're a financial expert. Look, he was literally <laughs> looking at the individual uh, components of these CDOs. Mm -hmm. He was looking at, at these people's credit scores and like these people can't, can't afford this loan. So right. he, he was looking at the, the, the minutia, the, the granular detail of these giant financial packages. You can't really do that with Bitcoin. Well, I mean, you can and then be completely wrong tomorrow and watch it moonshot to 80K. No, what I'm saying is, there, like, who, who makes up Bitcoin? Is, oh, is there oh a Bitcoin, fair, fair. Is there a Bitcoin package or are the, are the people taking out loans or something to get Bitcoin? 
probably, but there's no, no one's trading that. No one's trading those, hey, these are our Bitcoin loans that we're sending off mm. to get repackaged into a billion different other products. That's a fair point. Well, though that could happen in the future with this Bitcoin ETF does open the door for that. Oh, you know, that's actually exciting to, th to game theory about. Yeah. That's fun. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's true. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> because Knock on I mean, wood. there's a lot of powerful people uh, that's that want to keep the the dominance of the USD and Bitcoin is the relief valve for that. It's a life raft. If you don't have Bitcoin uh, as part of any sort of holding, you're doing yourself and your kids if you have them a disservice. You know, that's a good point. I think there's a quote from Morgan Stanley on this, you know, I, he says, "I don't know how much Bitcoin should cost, but these things will not go anywhere." And blockchain technology on the basis of which these digital assets are made is obviously quite real and provides great opportunity. And if Morgan Stanley's saying this, then we know that there is going to be a real future for Bitcoin. Now, you know, we, we speculate and we talk about this and we, and we talk about 250K Bitcoin. This bull run's real, it's going to happen. But just remember, cryptocurrency is very, very volatile. While these numbers are very large, we've both seen the waves turn. It goes up and it definitely goes down. So do remember, Try not to invest your entire life savings into something like this unless you're prepared to lose it all or you have some backup plan. Well, there's been studies on, on people trading Bitcoin, when to buy, when to sell, and the best strategy is just to cost average in and hold. Yeah. Just have a consistent time and amount that you're, you're getting in every week, every month, every quarter, whatever it is your strategy is, and keep, keep to that. It's true. If you can do that and hold on to your Bitcoin, I guarantee in a year from now, 10 years from now, you're going to thank every single second you held because one Bitcoin is going to basically be generational wealth. Sure, yeah. Those 6,000 Satoshis that you're paying for a, a cup of coffee, that could be a lot of money in, in five years. He's correct. And, <laughs> yeah. and with that, that is your Crypto Bite. Hey!